We're going to pick back up on what you were talking about, Judd, about there were times when the mayor didn't always get along with women. Well, it wasn't get along. I mean, he, he was of his generation and, and his background, and I don't think when he was accustomed and Jackie had always had a unique relationship with him, and there were folks that he was very close to, but I don't think he was accustomed to women telling him what to do. Um, and I was in meeting, a couple of meetings early on where some women thought they could tell him what to do or what he should do, but he adjusted. I mean, it was, he, he was constantly rethinking these things. I don't think that Harold was, when he became mayor, was, knew much about the, the gay community in Chicago. Um, and, but over time, it, you know, he, he was a person who was inclusive, and he figured this out for himself and became very much committed to all of the different groups in the city. And, and he used to love, when, one thing I always thought was most amazing about him was he didn't take vacations. He didn't, he didn't take care of himself, which was a tragedy. But um, a vacation for Harold would be that he would pick a subject that he really cared about and you get a syllabus put together. Not you get a caulk and you help him put it together and get as much reading material as he could. And you take a weekend and go to the library and read hmm. and read and read. And then it, it was not, I don't say it was common, but on occasion, come Monday, I would get a telephone call. I said, Judd, did you know this? <laughs> and would share something that surprised him. And what he was, and oftentimes, if it was something we were focusing on, he, he wanted to share it and talk about it. And what was your reaction? I mean, that, it was constantly um, so, so, probing so, this so, stuff. So let me, let me rebut what he said. You know, he said that... <laughs> <Sorry>. that <laughs> he, said, he said that Harold didn't know much about the gay and lesbian community but, and, and women, right? So there was Kit Duffy, who uh, was a friend of the gay and lesbian community. And so Kit, well, Duffy, right. Kit Duffy told Harold everything he needed to know about the gay and lesbian community. And that was a woman telling Harold what to do. On the other hand, um, you know, so when Harold decided to appoint me as um, di director of the mayor's office and governmental affairs, which meant I had to go to Springfield, which meant I had to deal with Mike Madigan and Phil Rock. And so there were some folks, the males around, were saying, oh, that's not going to work. Mike Madigan's not going to want to work with a woman and a black woman. And so uh, Hero said, uh, I'm appointing Jackie to the position. So what I did, I called Mike Madigan. I said, Mike, uh, Hero wants to appoint me mayor's, uh, to the mayor's office, and I have to work with you. Do you have a problem with that? He said, why should I? I said, OK, end of story, right? Mm -hmm. so, so there were things like that that Hero listened to women. Liz Hollander, Liz Hollander gave him a whole education on development in Chicago, mm -hmm. and he listened to Liz Hollander. So Judd no, Miner, no, no, I no, don't no, know no, what you no, mean no, by, I'm by not what saying, you said. Once he became, as he got into it, he listened. He listened to everybody, and he was flexible, and he, and he was capable of doing it. I'm, I just believe, well before that time, he, if you had I asked him to identify what all this was going to look like, that wouldn't have been a major piece, but it became increasingly right, important. Let me go back to I'm going to let the two of them you know, fight you know, about yeah, that. Right. I, I will tell you this: <laughs> I never saw Harold hesitate about women at all. <laughs> no, no, that was not in my experience with him. <laughs> so. Council Wars was obviously the most uh, visible way that the fractures in this city were showing at the political level. Uh, and it was more than race. It was the old daily machine, the first daily. It was the progressives. As his floor leader, what were those days like for you? And was it real? And by that, I mean politicians used to be able to yell and scream at each other and then go drink at night. Well, it was real in this sense. Um, power was at the base of it. Race was being used to push power in the direction that power was seeking. But uh, I don't ever thought, I never thought that it was race alone. No, no. Um, the way Harold defined um, reform was open government, efficient and honest government, but fair government. And he saw reform as a vehicle to change things. And so I viewed um, the wars, the council wars, 
as his attempt to change things versus those who didn't want to change things. That was at the base of it. So what we envisioned was this. We'd say, we're going to propose X, Y, and Z for all the communities. And some on the Vidoli Act 29 would say, we're going to oppose that. And we'd say, yeah, and we're going to go right to your community, and we're going to tell your community that this is what we want to do for your community, and we'll see what your community has to say about that. And what would happen is Harold would show up, and the community would say, yeah, we want that. Mm. And we'd look around, and this Vidoliac uh, alderman would be on the sideline, and then pretty soon they'd say, well, Tim, could you uh, ask Harold if he's going to do that, could he put our name on what he's going <laughs> to propose as well. I mean, he was just wise. And he wasn't, he wasn't afraid to confront the racism because there was no racism. All he wanted to do was to share the city's resources, the services, and everything else that their taxes paid for. That's what he was all about. And it, there, there are murmurs of that still today. Right, the only surviving city council member is obviously Ed Burke, and he doesn't do things directly, but he's still active, and there's still it is a it is a it's still race. I'm not going to dismiss that because I I absolutely think, and for me, I think it's race. I think it's sex. I think it's homophobia. You know, all rolled into one. But fundamentally, it's also about power, and and I think what um, Judge Evans was just saying is true. When you have somebody that comes into government, and particularly the head of government, with a very different sensibility about governance and, and righting historic wrongs, and that was very much at the center of what Harold was trying to do, and now, 30 plus years later, um, what I am trying to do, there are people who always profit and benefit from the status quo, and nobody wants to relinquish that power. And really, that is fundamentally the fight that we're in today. There are people who will say, all the mayor cares about, meaning me, is the south and west side. And I've literally had people say to me uh, from the north side, we generate all the income for the city, and then you spend it over there. But if you look at the long game, and I think this is really one of the key points of what the judge just said, we all benefit when we all benefit. And having a sense that what I get means less for somebody else and vice versa, to me is exactly the wrong way of looking at it. If you've got parts of your city that are starving for resources, that feel neglected, then you don't thrive as a city. And it's not cost free. You're just paying for it in a different way. Jackie, um, council wars and all of this hostility on the floor you know, gave us a very bad reputation nationally. We were Beirut on the lake. How did that, how was that taken care of? And how did that play on his psyche? Oh, well, I don't think it played on Harold's psyche at all. <laughs> uh, because as Tim said, Harold, and, uh, and the judge said, Harold knew what he wanted. Right, and he was confident in what he was doing. Uh, so you know, the the headlines didn't bother him. He didn't govern by the headlines. He governed by uh, what was right, what his objectives were, and 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 the importance of, uh, of his decisions to the to the citizens of Chicago. So as part of putting together this program, our team looked over countless clips of Mayor Washington and council wars and all of these moments. And what was interesting was. You rarely saw him get mad, but there was one moment, I think it was at the Democratic National Convention, and Ed Bradley I was, there. was trying to get him to talk to Ed Verdoliak. I was there. Uh, I have a picture that Antonio Dickey captured mm -hmm. of me talking in Harold's ear, mm -hmm. telling him what Ed Bradley and Verdoliak were doing. But anyway, <laughs> go ahead. But if you have to turn out a vote for the Democratic candidate, how can you do it if you don't have a unified organization in Chicago, in Cook County? I mean, you and the man standing behind me here don't even deal with each other in public. You don't, you don't talk in the delegation. How can you work together to turn out a vote in Cook County? Let's put it this way. If the gentleman to whom we refer has an interest as deep as mine, and if he has a constituency like mine who will come out and vote for Democratic candidates, 
It is up to him to match what I can do, but I don't think he can. Well, let's ask him. Oh, wait, now, wait, now, wait. Uh, wait, I didn't want to get into a discussion. Well, let's ask him, can the two of you work together? I mean, he's our mayor. But, no, but can, can, the, can the two of you work together? Uh, can the two of you work together? that again. Can the two of you work together? Yes, we can. You can work together. You, you don't even talk with each other here. I talk to him all the time. I say hello, Mr. Mayor. He says hello to me. I think, I think what we have here is, a, is an example of the kind of problem that the ticket faces. We have two Democrats that, that can't work together. The press, which has no respect for people at all, and you think you can intrude upon people just to get a few lines in, in the press. That is totally and completely bad, and I'm stunned at a man of your high caliber and moral Mr. ethical Mayor, standard who would stoop to such a thing. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, I'm asking you if two don't Democrats don't can ask, work together. Don't ask me anything else. Uh, Obviously, you are, you are one of the lowest possible individuals I've seen. How dare you call yourself a pressman? One of the things at that convention uh, was something I'd never done before, but I was part of the, man the floor management team for that convention. So I had walkie-talkie, this was the days before cell phones, so I had a walkie-talkie uh, that uh, different people around the floor, were, particularly there was somebody that was dealing with the press for the Illinois delegation. And so they told me that Ed Bradley and Berjoliak were talking. Uh, and so uh, I then went running from almost the other side of the McConey Center to Harold to say that this was going on and I didn't want him to be ambushed. And that was the, the still shot that I have of me putting that into Harold's ear. And so when, when Bradley showed up, you know, Harold was ready for bear, as you just heard. <laughs> He was loaded for bear, that's for sure. He was quite the wordsmith, as you could tell from that. Oh, he had yes. no problem <laughs> saying what he said to the point where the reporters had to run back and look at the dictionary to try to figure out what he had said <laughs> yes. that day. And that, I think, to a certain extent, a lot of people didn't expect a black man to be like that and to have the, the couth and the, the um, diplomacy that he did. I mean, did, did you notice that? During that well, time? People, I did so, notice yeah. it, and, and I can assure you he was prepared for it. We had taken the train out to uh, California, and those possibilities had been discussed. Several of us had been uh, riding along with him. We didn't know what to expect from him on the train ride, frankly. But he was saying, well, what if this? Uh, what if that? Because remember, one of the issues might be, well, are you going to endorse this particular candidate? Are you going to endorse that particular candidate? But I don't think he expected that to come from Ben Bradley. No, uh, Ed, 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 Ed Bradley. That's Ben Bradley. He's my cousin. <laughs> <laughs> He's my cousin. <laughs> the Bradley a far, far less successful yeah. journalist. <laughs> but so that kind of threw him for a loop. Yeah, I, I don't think he expected to come because, remember, um, that particular program involving that Bradley, yeah. was so popular uh, and uh, he was compassionate generally he wasn't in the middle of uh, controversy generally so I think he might have been surprised by who brought it up but not the fact that it would come up I don't think he was surprised by that at all just as uh, Jackie said but amidst he was ready. the nastiness of council wars and the way it got so personal I mean they were trying to stick scandal to him left and right I mean mayor perhaps you're the best to answer this how hard is it to always take the high road? It's hard. I'm not going to. I'm not going to tell you any differently. Um, you know, I came in the door with uh, people shooting at me. Um, the thing you must do, though, and I think that that's what Harold Washington was a master at, is not being distracted. To make sure that the things you want to get done get done. And I'm not going to always say that I've had the thickest of skins, but I. I have tried my darndest over three, almost three years to keep moving forward and not be distracted and get things done. And so, again, the media likes to cover the back and forth and the drama. But what I would, I would say for me and any other mayor, it's judge us by what we actually get done, even when there's a lot of controversy and a lot of noise. And I, again, I, I think this is a under, um, valued part of his legacy, he got amazing things done under the most difficult circumstances. As we continue to honor the legacy of Harold Washington, we take a closer look at his push for reform and how his policy initiatives still provide a blueprint for the city today.